and thrilling for what happened years ago. And I done a great bit of research into it. And in 1696, the hometown of Scotland became famous for a witch trial. And this all started off with a wee girl at 10 years of age called Christine Shaw. And her father was a baron in Bargaran Estates. Mm -hmm. And she took her in the village of one of the servants. And she blamed the servant for turning her into a witch. And she would cough for a wee bit of feathers and stones and things like that. And she blamed it in the witches. And it went from here, and these were the witches at home. Up the countryside, what we could eat, what, and what the cures were, because there wasn't the doctors or that, and it was just the witches and made up cures for everybody. So if they cured them, they were called witches. But this wee lassie accused them, and there was a trial, and it, and it said that they brought them, these women, to, they said they were a coven. And they brought them there, and they were all executed at the foot in Dallas Green, just off a Castle Street in Paisley. And then they were burned at the bottom of Marshallton Street at Marshallton Street Cross. And there was a horseshoe put in the top, but they took the ashes from there up to Woodside Cemetery. And just as the entrance into Woodside Cemetery, the ashes were put and nothing would grow there. And absolutely nothing would try. Dandelions and some divorce would put a wee bit, squeeze a wee bit dandelion on them and that put the water away. But this was the cattle and the fuel. Even yet, the cattle knew there was a storm coming and they'd all gather in a corner of the fuel. They stalled it up. So they blamed that on witches that was causing all this. But this place that they didn't know, there was two young brothers, one ten year old and one fourteen year old to Houston and they were garages to say that they were witches too. But there was one called Catherine Carter and she was since three minutes struggling for to get hung. And they were they were burned and they were shouting curses at Paisley. And all the, really, all the people that was watching, they were putting curses in them and on their family, which only made me do it was.
two disappeared through the cobbles in 1970. And the whole of Paisley has all come down. You see that? The mall's all closed and all the things all come down. So do you believe in the cursing? Eh? Do you believe in the cursing, Betty? I don't believe in the curse, but all that has all came to pass. I don't believe in witches in any way, they were ordinary people. I remember as I was a wee girl, this young man getting brought to the house and they tied him onto a chair and it was what they called, I think a flash. It was a wee bit mess, what was his eye? All right. And I would maybe be about six or seven, but I still remember I'm getting tired so they couldn't move. And my mother got that out of his eye. It was, it was pure agony. She liked it with her tongue. She would have been a witch. is Ellen Aldevant. And I was born in the Fountain Gardens, Paisley, in 1919, so I'm 92 years old. Yes, well, my story about the witches is similar, but a wee bit different. I was led to understand that the Gala Green was a still in being, and it was behind Daniel's Cottage, which is in Queen Street. But I don't know if that's the case. But anyway, I know they were taken there and they, they were garroted, they didn't say how, just said that they garroted and then they had been built to the stake and their ashes had been buried at the foot of Queen Street and they had put a horseshoe on top of it. But in later years there will be more traffic around and they had opened up and they put a brass plate in the street saying what was underneath, and the horseshoe was also enclosed in it. That's the one that I know about, the, the witch has been hauling one thing or another. And I knew about the wee girl, and what was it, her father was laid of Argaran. Argaran, aye. Yes, and she seemingly could perform to request. She had reported a maid in the kitchen for stealing a cup of milk and drinking it. And this, the maid was possessed by the witches, and she for a cursing wee girl, and she could spit up feathers and pieces of fur and dried up bones. And the thing was, she spat these things out, and none of them were wet. They were all dry when she spat them out. I heard that bit about them, but that wee girl. Do you know about the superstition of the horseshoe? Pardon? Do you know about the superstition surrounding the horseshoe? Why it was a horseshoe? Or... No, I didn't. Did your family tell you oh, anything sorry. about the curse of the witches? Your mum or your dad? Your no. Dad? No, nothing? No, unfortunately my mum might have told me because uh, she might have heard things maybe my father didn't, because he wasn't a Paisley man. He came from a Berkshire. But my mother died when I was eight, so I didn't have, you know what I mean? Did anybody ever talk about it when you were at work or anything? Or no, I don't, I don't remember anyone ever discussing it with me. And nobody's ever really mentioned it to you? No, there wasn't a great conversation about them. I knew they existed. Because I went to the Nielsen School, and at one time I thought the bunch of witches at a part of Oakshaw between the Oakshaw School and the High Church with the tower. But I was wrong, it turned out that those things turned out in the school, and it turned out it was one of the men who were building the steeper. He fell down and got killed there, and they did a thing out with stones, and it was his bonnet his glasses and a handkerchief. And that's where I originally thought the witches had been burned. Do you think people are more superstitious nowadays or were they more superstitious years ago? Oh, I think oh, they might have yeah. been more superstitious. Oh, they were superstitious. 
I mean, my father always said, never cut your nails on Sunday. <laughs> because it's bad luck. I'm still with that. And do get your hair cut on a Sunday. Was that That's not a religious right. thing as well? Or superstition? Aye, because my son was born in the Belshire. He wasn't, you know, I'd have a wee free cut cuts. Yeah, so. He didn't go, he went to the ordinary Presbyterian church. But uh, his mother made the, the, the Sunday dinner on the Saturday night. And it was a good song verse for some church on Sunday and during the Saturday and all these things. Do you think men are more superstitious or women? Which? No, I think maybe women are more inclined to be superstitious. Mm -hmm. It depends on the, the nature of the, the person, doesn't it? It does, and how they've been brought up. That's right, but I was, and I'll tell you this story. My father didn't like me doing a wash. He, he left with me, my husband, and two boys, and he didn't like me doing a washing on a Sunday, and I never ever did one. But one day, being an indulgent mother, I gave one of my sons tea and toast in his bed one Sunday morning. And what happened, he spilled the tea on the sheets. So I said, oh, I'll, just, I'll need to wash that sheet. And I hung a rope up where people wouldn't see it. I lived out in Hawaii, you are here. They wouldn't see it from the street. And I'm hanging up that sheet to get dried. And my nine-year-old son stood at my side, you know what he said? If my father was living, you wouldn't be hanging out that sheet. And I said to him, oh, how will you go? And do you know what happened? The rope broke for no reason, and the sheet landed in the grass. And I said, that was your grandpa that came back and cut that rope. witchcraft trials. The shoe of the horn keeps a curse away, as long as the shoe by the back's welting will stay. Gossips and blethers spin their wild tales, and from the accused comes curses and wails. A trial immersed in a cauldron of suspicion, a track extracting said guilt from subversive submission. The hangman awaits with the open noose, Eight deemed guilty of witchcraft abuse. All the accused would feel the terrible wrath from their interrogator, a man of the cloth. Could a mere girl of 11 years old have been bewitched as the story was told? Stories of levitation and an unnatural thing. From her mouth, coal and pins she would bring. This infant accuser, a daughter of the laird, the grievously accused had reason to be scared. Oh, the cries, the lies, the fears in their eyes. To court with the devil in a terrible demise. Imprisonment after trial and tribulation. To be sent to the devil and his damnation. One which did die while held in jail. Of cause of death there was no detail. On that day in Paisley, never again to be seen, the hanging of witches in Galloway Green. I know a lot about the witches uh, of Renfrewshire, the trial and the 35 people and the seven that were actually found guilty. Uh, Christian was the name of the young girl who did it. She was only ten years old at the time. And um, she accused uh, a lot of people of it because she didn't understand the language. The language spoken by these people was because they were from the Highlands. It was Gaelic. But she thought it was a curse. So she condemned them all and then she started coughing up all these metal parts and uh, because of that the people believed her and the people were put for trial and seven of them were actually executed. One was, he hung himself in jail, six others were garroted, all seven were 
plant the ashes and the ashes buried where Maxington Road Court is now. They put down a horseshoe made of iron because iron was supposed to be proof against the magic. And so long as that remained in place, Paisley would have good luck. It was moved in the 1960s for a road resurfacing. And then when it put back, it was broken. So they moved it to the museum and it got stolen. And they never put it back again as far as I know. But since the 1960s, Paisley's business has declined. A number of car factories have come and gone. A number of textile manufacturers have come and gone. It's uh, all blamed on the fact that this horseshoe was moved for the Agnes Newkey's curse. She was actually supposed to have been a herbalist at the time. Um, her curse has apparently come to pass and Paisley has now been 18 businesses have moved out of Paisley. 42,000 people, workforce, have left. Well, I talk about the, the witches at Brampshire. Well, the witches were hung at Queen Street in Paisley, where you can still go today and see where they were hung with the, the monument and all that there. Robertson Jam and Marmalade Factory in Paisley closed in 1974 after 110 years in business. The Golden Shredded Marmalade Division was moved to Bristol Factory with a loss of 250 jobs. This is some of the packages from the early 1900s and this is the jar that we have today and it has Paddington Bay on it. In 1963, Roots opened up a car company. The Teresa Hillman was busy. Well, this is the Teresa took over after Dr. Mark done the patch on the Roots and Hillman and it shut down. It was the worst of it to 4,500 the jobs. There was also the knock-on effect that um, when the car company closed India of Inchinning, they had produced the rubber tyres for the Linwood plant and when the Linwood plant closed in 1981 the India Tire of Inchinnan closed in behind it and paid off 2,500 workers because they had manufactured the tires and put them on the wheels for the car manufacturing plant in Linwood. So that was another loss. When the closure of the factory happened in Linwood, there was lots of knock-on effect and thousands of other people lost their jobs. The Coates' Mills opened up in Daisley in 1886 and became known as a thread industry and also became the largest thread industry throughout the British Empire. During this time in 1886 it had over 20,000 workers. But I'm going to pass you on to someone who actually worked in the mills at that in the Pacific Times and Christine. You worked in the mills? Uh -huh. No, the 1800s. Not the 1800s. Yeah. Fingers and mills were always known as the spinning mills. They spun the cotton from various countries. And then the cones of the threads were shipped over to anchor mills where they were wound onto bobbins. Like this here. When the closure of the mills came about, we actually lost over 28,000 employees in Paisley and Renfrewshire in a whole. 
Now that the longest standing employees with the Renfrewshire is the Renfrewshire Council, we employ just as many as were lost in the mills. As well as we had the courts as well, we also had other industries within days like that at the same time. Notably was Brown and Paulson's. Brown and Paulson's played a big part in the thread industry, such as making the starch for the threads. Then knowing later on that the maize that was made from the starch was edible and could be used for different areas of making sponges and cakes as we know today. Horty was moved in Kately in the 1960s and 1980s. Kately now has the biggest amount of empty shops in Scotland. One of the reads we go to dancing, go to pictures, eh, any you know, pastime and feels like they've all gone now. And we put it down to the Horty. <laughs> Renfrew Shire's industrial decline was further cemented with the loss of the shipbuilding industry within the area. This included five shipbuilding companies, including McLaughlin's, Milton Brothers at Lone End, who had the distinction of making prefabricated ships. Then there was Fleming and Ferguson, and in Renfrew there was Simon and Lobnitz, who were famous for donating the Renfrew baths to the county of Renfrewshire and Renfrew town itself. She of the horse, she's cast away, as long as she by Max Welton will stay. Did you have me tell milk to the house that wasn't going to drink? Head off to the 
my notes, Dave, puddles in my tape thing, it's Casey Hands. Hey, Casey, I just left him the Bible for you. Have you heard God's command? Yeah. That's not you. Yeah. You know, just like a common thief living in our house. Casey, what Christian guy was going to do? Yes, Sonia, I'm very not holy, you can ask him. Real Casey, what's your to say to him? We should give him to the position of trust. of the garden, standing, good feeling citizens. We have made them daughter, Christian, a lovely daughter who reads her Bible and keeps her name. We have heard them. I know in the part of Christian, feeling the help of doctor, knows herself to be progressed. Our task is to ascertain the guilt for seven to stand accused here of preventing us. By use the power of a witchcraft. Are we prepared to look at evidence with open minds? I shall be the judge of that. The people will accuse the top for trial for the election of this green shop. Daughter of John Shaw. People call me Katie. I came down from the Highlands. There was a terrible famine up there. So I decided to come to the Shire of Renfrew to see if I could get work. At first it was very difficult. People couldn't understand me. We spoke Gaelic at home. More than the Scotch the people when you're down here. Many's the night I slept up. Until one day I heard there was work to be had at my garden house. So I got myself fresh enough and went to see. The lady in the house and I got on very well, and the good, hard feeling woman that she is took pity on me and gave me a job here working at my garden house. Then one day it all went wrong. I took a drink of milk. Miss Christian called me a thief. And now the shots are driving me a witch. I know I've got a temper and I say things I shouldn't. But now I'm worried about my future. If I have a future. So I'm lengthening my name. I've been working in the land since I was a wee boy. My family's I work the land. So when I get the chance to give a pair of my aim, I took it. You know I say I'm a servant. All this upset the harvest in my cattle and food crops as well. I know the best for the land and my grows well in wild places. My son John, he's a cotter like me and all in a garret. I see him quite often and we go for a walk through the woods. Sometimes we meet other folk there and they attack and all sorts of things. But who? Just across the water. It's in a whole party. It's 
I can use her um, travel the north, see if you want food in there, and all the mattresses in the bottom. People have been good to me. I generally get so many. Hey, I'm here tonight and something to eat. But lately, there's not been so much work to do. And I find myself having to sleep in the hedgerows and beg on myself for food. Well, new day folk in the garden. They've accused me of witchcraft. <laughs> I've got a bit of a temper on me. And I've never harmed a soul. But if I were to start in their shores, I know God is by my side. He's here. But the devil's here and all. And he's laughing at me. And he's laughing at you. And you. And you. And he's laughing at every one of us. You'll be back. My name is Martin Lang. I live over in Orbiston. I'm a cotton on a farm there with my husband. Over the years I've delivered many money babies here to both rich and poor folk as well. I remember a way back someone thought I was gradually I think more and more that people sent for me to help them. I'm a Christian woman. And I don't understand why all this is happening to me. I people say I'm a witch. Some of the same people whose children I help bring into this world. I, I don't understand. I know God is the person for all of his servants, but I don't see the purpose in allowing all these terrible things to happen to me and these others. I, I can only say that what he wants me to do will be made clear. I'm John Lindsay. Now let me work at a farm in the garden. The farm is called the I'm, I'm always working at a farm. I come from a farming family. Since I was a wee lad, I'm always working at a farm. Fuck around here, I'm giving me another name. You know that the bishop is because of a faithful servant to our farm going. I read the good book each day, a free each day, and I'm seeing the cockroaches come back. My father, John, has his own farm at Orbiston. We always keep in touch. I don't understand what's happening out here. All this talk about witchcraft, I don't really understand. But I have faith in the Lord and his servants here and there. And my faith, see me through. The Lord will be done. Every wet Sunday, I go to Kirk 
and I obey the commandments slave dentures by God above. I can honestly say I've always tried to help my fellow man. You know, I fell in joy going to visit my brother and his wife in their farm. So very far from mine. And it's a bra walk through them woods. And quite often I meet up with some friends and we hear a bit of chatter. And I don't know where this rumour about witchcraft and devil worship started. I've never seen any sign of it. The same were accused are brought to trial for their abduction of Christine Shaw, daughter of Lord John Shaw and the Lord Bagaran. I'm going to ask each one of you to state your name and your age and where you come from. Or for the jury. Who are the other women? My name, my name is Margaret Lang. And your age? 48. And where are you from? I'm from Orchester. Now the women say you're on the left. What is your name? <laughs> Margaret Phil and I are dead with my Lord. Oh. And you shouldn't be asking my name unless you tell you first. Ah, yeah. Oh, that's enough. Next to the right. <laughs> My name's Agnes Nesmith. My age has got nothing to do with us. No, I'm not a bad either. Right, right, right. Oh, hey, we're in the end of the day, are not we? There ain't a man in your case. Hell, make up to me! And you are? I'm going to be locked in your life for something I haven't been done, but well, people will want to know. Well, see in due course, to the extent of your involvement has been. And the man next to you is the right. Take clergy, sir. And the brother's been sent to him. But what about that, I say, you pay the attention. I've kissed him, Adam. You already know our names. And thanks to all the gossip, so does everybody else. The trial was a cutty girl. And you're not going to be able to know it, but for those for years to come, you'll do the same as we're out. Catherine Campbell, I'm 18 years old, and I was employed by the lads at McGarren until he stupid me lassie roped us all into our trickery. And you, boy? And what is your age? 17. And where are you from? Bangarin. May God have mercy on your soul. Oh, hush, woman! Don't be speaking to 
prayers. Oh Christ, save us. We thank they all be saved. <laughs> they all know be saved. I know. Only the very can save us. The face of God's voice. Christian show up, so up there with God. A voice he saves it. We are innocent. Show him. On our soul until the Lord makes his judgment. If this is there already. How be it? That for us God's eye. I will be passing. Did you have to believe in him? To life everlasting. That's for Timothy 1, 16, by the way. The man by nature sets the fall. It's a guilty creature. Be guilty. It's ready to be jealous of God. As if I had to say. What the saints of wrath against them. The appetite so suspicious as man of God that he is jealous of the hardness of his to say. That's one of the greatest ecstasies for us more than the world. That is descended in Son Jesus Christ and they want to save sinners. Ah, call me when you said I stopped it. If it be so, then the Lord have been pleased to give such instances of grace for the encouragement of the worst of sinners. To close me, Christ, and unto life everlasting. Then you may see such instances of grace are not given you to encourage you in sin. But that it may be a pattern to them that believe. The reason is not that you should remain hard and secure and delay your confessions, but that you may believe. But I assure you, the righteous and the grace of God have no tendency at all to make folk feel secure. One word further, and I still eat any longer. He's a better half before it sets the sentence. He's a bit much dealt with. And we are come to you the day before you're stepping into eternity, before your death. In train you for the half any longer. Why do to be serious? Because the Lord has shown much long suffering towards you. And yet she's hard in the hearts. They were hard in the hearts. We are come to you to desire you to last. Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if you are more harm them as your saviour, then we are free of your blood. And Jesus Christ is free of your blood. And you yourselves are only to be blamed for the slighting of the great salvation. Amen.
and they've tell me it's gonna be alright. You know, I'm going to fairyland, and I can sing and dance there as much as I choose. And you know what? They say that you want to come as well. <laughs> you be made well. We have reached the appointed hour of your death. As it is your right, if you have any thoughts to speak. Eternity. God, I mercy in your souls. Let his forgiveness be with you. Thank you. 
Guido. Was kann ich mit dir? A fair looking bottle to go to Fairy Land. And everything's going to be so good there. I'm going to spend the rest of my days with my fairy friends. The seven were accused of guilty as charged. And then they were taken and transported to the Gallo Green. They were strangled and burned, and the remains will be remained under the horseshoe at Maxwell Cross. <laughs> <laughs> 